Okay, good evening. Who have we got? Zira, Glenn, Quentin, and Mulyani. Excellent. Can you guys hear me? Just give me a wave or say hi or something. Glenn saying, oh, okay, yep, can hear me. Excellent, excellent. I think we should let the ladies go first tonight. So if that's okay with you boys, all good. Nasira, say hello. We're all waiting for you, darling. Huh? Say hi, ask a question, give us a wave. We can't see your video and there you are. Good evening. <laughs> We're waiting for you to ask a question, doll. And we can't hear you. You may have to unmute yourself on the screen. There should be a little button. Okay, now I can hear you. Yeah, now we've got you. Sorry? Okay. Now we've got you, we can hear you. Yeah, I can't, but I can very faintly hear you. I am in the car, so I do apologize. Oh, okay. You don't have like headphones or something? No, I don't. Actually, oh, yeah. I'm in the office, to be honest. I'm, yeah, I'm speaker on the iPhone is generally not very ones. good. I okay. thought I could hook it up through the, so the car speakers, but that's not working. Oh, right, right. Yeah, it might, might not work with Bluetooth because it's not actually a phone call. So that's all right. We can hear you and you'll be able to yeah. access the recording for later on. But I thought it. even because Audible works. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So tell us what yeah, you've been I'll up to that, in the crypto I'm world. I'm about to start driving again. Yeah. What, what have you Sorry? been up to in the crypto world? What have you been buying? What have you been looking at? What would you like to know more about? Um, I've only bought a little in probably what's a Ponzi scheme, but oh well. Um, uh, that's it at the moment. I'm looking mm -hmm. at hoping to buy more uh, Bitcoin mm -hmm. and looking at other currencies and finding out more about our other currencies. Um, yep. But at this stage, like I haven't done anything more than just that other thing that I put in. Yeah. So do you mind telling us what that one was? Uh, that was a BTC Global. Okay. Yeah. I haven't so, come across that one yet. Yeah, you put in a um, thousand US dollars and they pay yep. you 2% interest every day. So okay. that's 14% every week. You can either have that compounding or you can have that paid at the end of every week into your account. Yeah. Into Back into your uh, CoinJar account. And then you can convert that back into your bank account. Yeah. Own wealth, whatever it is, and then you can get the funds out of that. So so far, it's fine. I don't have to refer anyone in order the, in order to get that fourteen mm -hmm. percent. Like it, it's really up to you whether that's what you want to do or not. And I haven't referred anyone, and I yeah. still get that. So okay. yeah, that's it's not one of those you have to refer to get that fourteen percent, which I think makes a bit of a difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was there was a couple of those in operation. We dealt with a on the first call, um, BitConnect and UC Tech, um, yes. which recently got kicked out of Canada and, and the US. And it was, yeah. it was a big recruitment thing. Um, yeah. And whilst I was very wary saying, you know, MLM is all good for selling washing powder and skin lotions and mm. vitamins and that sort of stuff, but really they shouldn't be selling money. Um, but a couple of people on the call disagree with me and said, look, if it wasn't for those, I would never have found out about Bitcoin. Went, okay, well, well, that's the other thing. That's the other thing, you know, um, and I actually know people from, cause I went to Tony Robbins last year and I know people from my Tony Robbins group who actually managed to clear their debt with mm. UCI technology and yeah. now they're debt free. So, you know, for some it worked and I'm hoping after they got debt free, they took it out on time. I haven't caught up with them yet, but, yeah. um, for others, unfortunately, I know some did lose quite a bit so that from the articles that I read, not anybody mm. that I knew personally, um, but yeah, I guess uh, for me, it, I only put in what I can afford to lose or I don't care mm -hmm. losing. Do you know what I mean? 
Okay. Well, the very pyramid schemes worked out very well for the pharaoh. It just didn't work work for everybody else. So yes. if you're one of the first people in and you rec recruited 10,000 people under you, then happy days for you. But obviously you can stand to lose a lot of friends out of something yeah, like that. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Which is why I'm not into referring because I'm like, uh-uh. If you want, you do your own research, you do your own stuff and it's all on you at the end of the day. You know, I yeah. can point you in the direction of like either joining groups like this or, you know, other things on Facebook and stuff like that. And you do your own research, but don't take my advice on that kind of stuff. Like, because I'm not taking anybody else's. I'm doing it on my own as well in that, you know, um, yeah. I understand I'm going in and there's a high risk, like everything in life. But yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's yeah. good to hear. Self-education in this area is absolute key. And oh, you know, sure. I've said that for many years in, in financial planning, people just come in and say, Oh, I just throw my money into something like you want to understand how it works and exactly. find out a little bit about it. Cause a lot of people got interested in the stock market through their managed funds or through their superannuation. Mm. That's how they first found out. So if you join a, a little club or something like that and they're doing it for you for a start, that's okay. Yes. Um, as long as you understand how it works. So you know, I've, yeah. I've been teaching people how the crypto works and how this sort of stuff works oh, and people, cool. people appreciate that. Yes. Um, and we're all, we're all learning together, you know, cause this is a very new, very new field. Exactly. And I've, I've learned a lot from, you know, just coordinating this group. But then some people have come to me and say, okay, I, I understand how it works now, but I want someone else to do it for me. <laughs> well, I don't see, have that's time the other office. thing I have. That's the problem mm. I have. I don't have time while I'm at work to constantly be looking at the graphs and, you know, being on Insta and everything else. That's pretty much what I feel is required with something like this, which can be a bit volatile at the moment. Um, yeah. And I don't have that energy. Well, I don't have that time at this at this stage to mm. be doing what other people do and constantly being on those things to look at it. So yeah, I, and that's probably why I only have gone to BTC global because I've put it in and I'm not doing, I don't need to watch it. I know it's yeah. just coming in and whatever. Yeah. But th th then again, I mean, there's some people who bought, bought Bitcoin for 25,000 know, a, a few weeks ago. And then because of the news in India, which yes. was fake news that spread throughout the media and that yeah. sort of stuff, it's gone down like $10,000, $9,000. Yeah. Is it um, 10 or is it six now? Um, it, I think it went down to like 8,000 US, but it, it was up over 10,300 when I looked at it this morning. Um, yeah. So, but that's, if, if you just sort of buy and hold and you know that Bitcoin's still going to be around in five years time, it doesn't matter. Yeah, if you're holding- Well, that's all I want to do, to be honest. I just want to buy, hold. I don't. I know this isn't going anywhere for a while. I know it's probably not going anywhere ever. Yeah. Um. I do think it's here to stay. Um. So yeah, my mine is just to invest correctly now, hold, and in ten years' time, have a look at it, see what my gold mine's like. <laughs> yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. As as you say, it's, it's very new. It's very volatile. And I think a, a couple of calls ago, I compared it to, you know, if you put a thousand dollars into Facebook and a thousand dollars into MySpace 10 years ago, yeah. well, the money in MySpace is gone. It's totally gone. Exactly. But you've made so much money on Facebook that you don't, you don't care about the money that you lost. So exactly. it's a good, good idea to diversify and, and learning about some of the other coins. So you make notes or you'll have the recording of this call and you'll see what yeah. some other people are into. Um, yeah. and also you can look on the, on the Krillionaire website and just say, okay, I'm cool with this. I'm happy with this. You know, some people don't like to invest into companies that do alcohol, tobacco, firearms, yes. gambling, prostitution, whatever it happens to be. Cause there's, there's horses for courses. Um, exactly. some people like to invest in ethical, sustainable things and environmentally yeah. friendly things. That's okay too. Just have a look at, cause there's, there's a huge selection. You know, there's, there's thousands of coins available. I've, mm. I've probably looked at um, profiling maybe only about 30 or 40 out of 2000. Um, wow. And obviously we're, we're learning in the group. Other people are, are teaching me things as well because it's, it's a yeah. big area to keep an eye on, but whatever you feel aligned with, if, if you, if you want to say, okay, look, I'm really into this um, sustainable energy or save the wombats mm -hmm. or whatever your coin does, yeah. and you know that you can sit on it for the next 20 years and that's okay. You know, it might yeah. not shoot the lights out, but if you feel good about it, then, that's yeah, exactly. Exactly. But yeah, um, this BTC Global, I think it's a, I don't know if it's a South African company or whether the guy is South African. I'm just not sure.
but I yeah. know when they when they do their figures and they do keep you up to date with the figures and everything like they seem to be pretty transparent I'm on their um, they've got an official group page on telegram and we've got everyone who's invested in I think Australia or wherever all over the world I think yeah. maybe it's only in Australia we're all on a on a group in telegram and yeah. on their actual official page group they're pretty transparent with the graphs and with how much they're paying out and people who do have people under them, their commissions and stuff like that. But when they quote yeah. it, it's in rands. So that's why right. I'm not sure. Okay. I mean, yeah. you, you can also back check that, um, you know, depending on how technical you are, if someone's been paid their commission, <laughs> uh, if someone's been paid their commission by the company, then you've got like their account number, their Bitcoin uh. number. And then you can search because you know, the blockchain is totally transparent. Yes. Once you've got their account number, you can actually look, for all of their transactions. You can't right. see their balance, obviously. Yes. You can't see how much money they're making, but you can see how much they're spending. And if they're oh, saying, yeah, right. yeah, we just paid out $10,000 in commissions, you can actually look on the blockchain and see whether they did or whether they didn't. And this you is where one of those other ones, that. yeah, one of those other ones fell foul of a few people because they, they said, oh, look, you know, we've paid out so much in commission and someone went, oh, hang on, you haven't. It's on the blockchain. You know, you can't forge yeah. that stuff. Um, and they pretended they were mining 5% of all the, all the Bitcoin and they were actually only mining 0.6% or something like that. So yeah, wow. the, the, there are a few scammers out there. The good thing is the scammers get found out very, very quickly because there's a yes. huge community and it's like on the internet. So it's, you don't have to wait for the police to come. You just tell a friend who tells a friend who tells a friend. Exactly. And everybody knows. Well, so. I'd be interested for you to show me how to do that. <laughs> Oh, it, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. It's pretty simple, but we'll, we'll look at that for later on. So um, you, yes, have you got no any worries. questions of the group so far or we have a chat with Glenn? Um, are you, sorry, are you asking me, Jeremy? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd love to know what everybody else is. Um, and I'm sorry if this question's already been asked in previous meetings. It's, this one's my first one. So yeah. I'd love to know what everybody else um, is putting their money in, how they're feeling about Bitcoin um, mm -hmm. and just the whole cryptocurrency, the crypto world. Um, and what have they found that's working for them? I know it might not necessarily work for me. Like I use CoinJar. Coinbase, um, I still haven't verified my stuff on there, but I want to know how to avoid having so many wallets. Um, you know, because some people are like, no, nah, we don't take anything. you got to be this. You gotta... So I'd like to know yeah. what everybody else is using, what's reputable. Because um, one, it, I do want to invest a bit more later on. And that investment, I want it to be like 110% secure as possible. Yeah. You know, yeah. so... Yeah, well, that, that's you've, what I would like you've to lived through the GFC, so you know that nothing's 110% secure. You know well, that there was know. banks banks who went down after 167 years, but we can do our best. So yes. Glenn, Glenn's but, been writing down all your questions. I can actually oh, see cool. him there. He's writing down what you've been asking. So he's going to answer those as soon as he's finished his mouthful of popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Glenn. Um, I, I am going to have to start seconds. driving, though, so I don't know if this is going to cut off when I start driving. If yeah, just if you, if you can mute the uh, mute yourself, or I'll I'll do that so we don't pick up on the engine noise, and then you can just yeah, listen without. Be Beautiful. Okay, so you you carry along. We'll keep smiling and waving to you, and Glenn's going to answer your questions. And if if you can't hear him because of the engine, <laughs> then you'll you'll get the recording. Hello, Jeremy. So, good mate. Good. How are you doing? Uh, to be honest, a little bit confused. Okay. Yeah. Um. Look, as uh, Nasira said, like, yeah, if it wasn't for some of these MLMs, we wouldn't know about uh, about Bitcoin. So I have invested a little bit in USI. Yep. Uh, I only put 500 in. So yeah, uh -huh. obviously put, put in, you know, something I'm prepared to lose if all else fails. $500, not 500,000. No, five hundred dollars. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if you're a big player. I just put in five hundred. I can afford to lose that. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. So, but what I've done is I've turned off my auto rebuy. So what I've been doing is at the moment in my payout, I've got one hundred sixty-four dollars. Hundred. Well, I've got point one six three two Bitcoin sitting there, and obviously, yeah. depending on the fluctuation, depending on how much that equals. Yeah, yeah. But what my plan is to is to just let that keep building 
Mm -hmm. um, and at certain points, take that out and use that to reinvest back into other coins. Yeah. 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 So I'm not investing any more in there. What's in there is still building, obviously still accumulating. Mm -hmm. um, and then through Coinbase, uh, I purchased uh, $100 of ETH and $25 of LTC. Okay. Uh, as it dipped last week. Nice. Nice work. Yeah. So not a huge a lot. Um, so what, I, what I'm a bit confused about is... Which wallet do we use? Uh, transferring it to an offline secure wallet. Um, yeah, like people talk about Trezors and the other, whatever they are, the other names. Yep, yep. Um, and then like, who do we buy? Sometimes I like, uh, who do we buy through? Like which wallet do we buy through, um, et cetera. Okay, some good questions, mate. Some good questions. And I, I think, you know, it's, it's good that, I mean, with, with Uzi and the other one, which what they call BitConnect, um, when they sell packages and they call them packages and they don't call them investments and you don't really know how many coins that you've got or what coins you've got, there is the possibility that, you know, that could disappear or you're really not learning that much. Um, whereas, you know, if, if you take your hundred bucks and you buy Ethereum or you buy Litecoin or whatever, at least you know what you've got. And then yeah. when they talk on the news about, you know, Bitcoin's done this or Litecoin's done that, you've got an idea and you know, oh, I saw it just went down because of the, you know, the Indian prime minister said this, or it just went up because the Chinese people did that or whatever. Um, you can actually start to see the news and you can start to realize what's happening and why it's happening. So for the, for the, for the first you know, month or two, it might be retrospective. Um, cause we've seen, you know, Bitcoin went down because of what happened in China and Bitcoin went down because of what happened in India, but then you'll actually start, once you start to see the patterns, then you'll know about it before it happens. So okay. yeah. that's, that's good. I mean, as far as the wallets and, um, Nasira asked this as well, you know, I've, I've got, I think six or seven wallets now, um, probably more, probably more. And this is because with, with the deregulation, the deregulation, the lack of regulation. Um, there's no one saying what exchange that they have to sell on or what wallet they have to use. So, you know, I, I think I first got in with Copay, um, which is just a Bitcoin wallet because Bitcoin was the only thing around back then. Um, and then after a while I got into Coinbase um, and then Coinbase only has the four coins on it. You know, you got Litecoin, you got Bitcoin, you got Ethereum and whatever the other one is. Um, Bitcoin, and Cash and BTC. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then if you wanted to buy IOTA or something else or, you know, Monero or, or Powerledger, then you've got to jump onto another exchange and you go, oh, I've got to jump on another exchange. And then when you buy that coin, that coin's not compatible with this particular wallet. So you go, oh, I've got to open another wallet now because I've now got that coin. So I, I actually created a, a spreadsheet last week, which has got, I think, hang on, let me just have a look here. Um, not that one. Uh, window. Where's the window button? There it is. Um, okay. So my, my wallets is Copay, Coinbase, Blockchain, I do, I am token, Trust and the exchanges. Some of those are exchanges. Uh, Coinspot, Waves, Spectra Coin, and Cryptonomous. And that's because the coins I wanted to buy were listed on those exchanges and only on those exchanges. Or, you know, in order to buy this one, like to buy Iungo, um, I could buy Iungo direct from the, the people. I couldn't buy it on an exchange because it wasn't listed. It was a pre-ICO. Then in order to have it show up, um, I actually had to have the I do wallet because the I do wallet would show up there as the token, whereas the other, the other one, yeah, Coinbase and Coinspot and these other ones, it wouldn't show up in there. So you know, I've, I've created an Excel spreadsheet. And for those who have known me for a long time, you know, it's, it's weird. I've been financial planning for 25 years. I hate Excel spreadsheets. I really do. Like I pay people to make Excel spreadsheets. Um, so Muliani's having a giggle there because yeah, she knows that she creates all the Excel spreadsheets and she puts them into, into Dropbox or Google Drive for me. So it took me about four hours the other day to actually copy and paste all this information and, and make it look... <laughs> 
<laughs> thanks Quentin, uh, to make it look sort of decent, but to give me an idea, because previously just been, I'd you know, open up my, my wallet or my exchange, I'd write down the figure on a bit of paper and then I'd add up the bits of paper. So now I've actually got it in one central spot. So you can be proud of me, Moliani. I've actually managed to do that. It, it, it can be hard to track because, you know, like in Australia, we have the Australian Stock Exchange, the ASX, and there's the Newcastle Stock Exchange, the NSX. And 95% of the shares that you will buy or that you'll see talked about are listed on the ASX. It's only very rarely that yeah. you have to go to the NSX. Um, of course, in America, they've got the, the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ and the whatever, whatever. Uh, their system's a bit more confusing, but their market is about 10 times the size of what, what the Australian market is. So this is what's happening in, in here. I mean, at the moment, there's a lot of exchanges. There's a lot of wallets. Maybe over time, we will actually see that consolidate. You know, there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of banks in America up until 1920. Um, and then one started to buy the other one, started to buy the other one. You know, we've, we've seen that even in Australia with Westpac buying um, St. George and, you know, a few other, like um, I think Bank of Western Australia is owned by Commonwealth Bank and National Bank owns something else. Um, Bank of Melbourne was also bought by Westpac. So maybe we'll see that consolidate over time as the market becomes more mature. And I'm, I'm kind of hoping that will happen uh, because it can be difficult to track where your money is and, and what's going on with it, unless you've got Mulyani who looks after your stuff or unless you've got a really good spreadsheet. Yeah, because so. like I was looking at, I was looking at IOTA and Monero, um, mm -hmm. like I wanted to invest a little bit into those, but then I wasn't sure which wallet to use or what exchange to go through. Like I've got the Binance app. Yes, and yes. And obviously you can find them on there. Yep. Um, but then I wasn't sure like how to buy it. I got a bit confused. Yeah. Um, I actually, I was running Binance for a while. Um, and there's so much information on Binance. It's got the tickers and the codes and the lines and the 30 day moving average and that sort of stuff. Like if you're a day trader, Binance is the site to be on. Um, but not only was it really, really confusing, it also was very slow to load because it's got so much information. Um, whereas if you jump onto CoinSpot, it's just got, you want to buy this? This is what it is. You want to buy this? This is what it is. Um, so I actually, ripped a lot of my stuff straight off of Binance and put it onto, onto CoinSpot. And you can just transfer, you don't need to sell it. You can just transfer the IOTA or the Power Ledger onto the other exchange. So that's a pretty simple. Okay, because I've got CoinSpot. Yep. Because uh, that's where I put everything through when I went through into USI. Right, CoinSpot, not Coinbase. Because there's CoinSpot, there's Coinbase, there's CoinJar. Yeah, no, CoinSpot. There's yeah, yeah. Spot because I've got Coinbase as well. That's where I've got my ETH and LTC. Yeah, yeah. So can you transfer between wallets? Um, yes, transfer between wallets and between exchanges. So for for me, you know, being in Australia, um, jumping onto CoinSpot or SpectraCoin or Cryptonymous in order to satisfy their things, I've got to have my driver's license, I've got to have my passport, I've got to have a selfie of me with my driver's license holding it up to my face, then I've got to sign a form and then it takes 14 days and like, screw that, right? I want to buy my stuff now because I see, you know, the price is moving the way I want it to be up or down. So I found it easiest to get verified on CoinSpot like within one day, some of these sites are taking two, three weeks. So I would, I would turn the Australian dollar into Bitcoin on CoinSpot Bang, yep. instantly off my credit card. Then I transfer the Bitcoin from CoinSpot, sorry, from Coinbase onto whatever other exchange I wanted to be on, whether it's SpectraCoin or, or Cryptonymous. Because even though you're not verified, you don't need to be verified to put cash in or to take cash out. But if it's a transfer of crypto, they don't care. So yep. I'm still waiting to be verified on Binance. It's been weeks and weeks. They've never verified me, but I was able to transfer Bitcoin onto there and then use the Bitcoin to buy Power Ledger and IATA and Monero. And then I could transfer them from there onto another exchange. So that's the simple workaround that I've found. Yeah, I mean, I've been uh, verified in Coinbase and CoinSpot. I didn't have, I was one of the lucky ones. It just went through smoothly, nothing, no, right. no it just it just happened pretty quick yeah um so that's good but yeah i just I say i just got to be confused of like you know where's the best place to buy those um 
Yeah, because obviously having, you know, if you're getting most through one wallet, it's obviously easier to manage. Uh, yeah, yeah. But then as, as I say, like some, some coins aren't available on some wallets or some exchanges. And, you know, I'm not sure what they're going to do about that. Um, I, I haven't been keeping a record of how many coins are on each one. But just anecdotally, I think, you know, in the last few months, it seems like CoinSpot has got a lot more coins on it than what it used to. Um, and that's just from my own observation. Like when you pull up the list, it looks like it's a lot bigger. Um, so hopefully there's going to be some consolidation and yeah, Quentin saying there's 80 on there now. And I swear there was probably only about 30 when I first got on there. Yeah. And with, with the ICOs, like mm -hmm. I clicked on a couple, um, but like they had a minimum, like two and a half thousand US to, to get into the ICO. Yep. Um, and I was like, Oh, I don't have that much. I don't have that much to invest right now, so I can't get, get into that ICO. Yeah, are they are most of the ICOs like that? Um, not not the ones. I don't know which ones you've been looking at. Obviously, um, you know you've you've been on the movers and shakers sites where they just drop. Oh, five hundred thousand. I can afford to lose that. Uh, <laughs> but some of, some of the ones I've been looking at, and some of the ones that are profiled on on the Krillionaire site, they had a minimum of like one hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, up to five hundred dollars. That you could put into, okay, um, yep. and and some of these like there's some that are coming out and doing the same job. Like um, Iungo is doing the same job as Hashnet. Um, they're basically saying, yeah, we don't need the internet. Everybody's just got a smartphone, and we can send a signal from your phone to my phone to your phone to you know everybody who walks within 500 meters of you. So if the government shuts down the internet tomorrow, we can still actually run this thing and not only transfer ideas but also transferring money. So they're, they're using the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi that's available in your phone to make another internet, basically. Um, okay. yep. And like there's, there's two companies who are doing the same thing. And I think it, it might be this Facebook MySpace thing. Like who's going to win? I don't know. But I can put $150 into that company, $250 into that company, and then just let them fight it out. You know, so there are, are some small minimums. I haven't seen one that's under $100 yet. Um, no, I mean, hundred, hundred, hundred for me is like fine. That's that's yeah, yeah, kind of like bench, yeah, you know, benchmark for me. Like, oh you know, if it was an ICO, I don't think there'd be much much point putting fifty bucks or twenty five bucks in. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's, some of these are like they might might sound interesting, but you're not one hundred percent sure. Like, I, I put one hundred and twelve dollars into one, and you know, a few weeks later, it was worth two hundred and thirty. Okay, well, if I hadn't known that, you know, I would have borrowed half a million dollars from you and whacked it. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't know, you know, so you just throw a couple of hundred bucks in there and see what happens. Yeah. And then that, yeah, the only other thing is the top, the time to read up on them. Mm. And then when I go to read up on them, I'm not, yeah, I, I'm still very small on the knowledge about it. And so yeah. even though I'm reading it, I don't really know what I'm reading. I don't really know how to translate the, the white paper as a, okay, I'm reading this, but is this good? Is this not good? Like, is there things that we need to look for or look out for? Yep, absolutely. The thing, the thing to look out for, mate, is if you can't understand the white paper, then get the hell out of there. Okay. If, if they're using language and jargon that the average bloke doesn't understand, then I don't know. I'm not sure whether they're trying to scam you or whether they're just really bad at communication and whether they're really bad at marketing. So yep. there's some brilliant guys out there, absolutely brilliant guys who are doing amazing things with technology. But if they haven't got someone on board who can communicate that to the average Joe on the street, then they're never going to get anywhere. Yeah. And then yeah. I heard of another one that they bought the white paper out. Mm. Um, so people read through it and invested and then they went and changed the white paper. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That so, can happen. And it will upset a lot of people, obviously. And they're, they're basically shooting themselves in the foot. So, you know, if, if, if you change the direction of the company and people don't like the way the company's going, they're going to be out of there. You know, like I bought shares in, I don't even know what it was, the, the company who made Forex, right? Can't remember, yeah. Lion Nathan, I think it was. Um, they don't just make Forex, they make a whole bunch of ciders and little alcohols and, and things like that. Uh, I don't drink, but I know a lot of people who enjoy a drink. And so next time I see them out Friday night and they're posting their selfies of them at the pub, I'm going to sit back and go, wow, my shares have just gone up. <laughs> right? Yeah. 
But if these guys came out and suddenly found religion and went, hey, you know what, we're actually going to start investing into, you know, building materials for the homeless and, and protecting people and, and not alcohol anymore, then I might be happy, but all of the other investors would not be happy and they're going to sell their shares. Yeah. So yeah, companies can upset people. That, that's what happens. Um, what was one that I invested into way, way back in the, in the day? Uh, it was Australia's first legal brothel. Um, and that was down in Melbourne and it was like you, you bought shares in the company and you owned the company and you know, I haven't been to a brothel. Other people have, that's okay. None of my business, whatever you do behind closed doors, it's all legal, whatever. Um, and I think it was about a year later, they actually decided that they were going to sell the business and buy the premises. Um, and they were basically a real estate investment then. And a lot of people went, okay, well, if we wanted to invest in real estate, we would have invested into XYZ shopping center or so-and-so building contracts. And yeah. people started selling the shares and just going, we're not happy. Yeah, we wanted to make money out of other people's sexual habits <laughs> rather than just, <laughs> just nice. rent. You know, like on, on rent, you're going to make 6%, right? Um, I don't know what the profit margin is for a brothel, but maybe you would have been making 20 or 30%, which is, you know, what some other companies would make in normal business. So people got upset, people sold out and, and the company went downhill. So yeah, yeah. If, if the white paper gets changed, then it's got to be changed for the better. Otherwise expect people to leave. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So the only other one was like, yeah, really was the you know, offline wallet. Like, do we need to, to get one and shift our stuff across so it's more secure? Yeah. Um, yeah that's, I mean, probably a question for someone, you know, who's, who's got half a million dollars sitting in there, then you would be really scared about security because, you know, these, these digital assets sitting on your computer. So if someone hacks your computer, they can take your money. Now, what Nasira said before is, you know, only invest what you, what you're prepared to lose. Um, if it was my life savings and if it was, you know, like I would mortgage the house to put my money in there, then I'd probably be a little bit paranoid, but I, I'm leaving some of mine are in wallets. Some of mine are on exchanges and they're saying, Oh, I'll never leave it on exchanges because exchanges are the first ones to get hacked. Well, yeah. that kind of makes sense because there's thousands of people on the exchange. There's hundreds of billions of dollars at the exchange. It's like a bank. And if a criminal is going to rob someone, he's going to rob the bank. He's not going to go and rob, you know, 25 individual people or thousands of individual people. But I'm also expecting that the exchange knows that. The exchange knows that the bigger the exchange, the bigger the target they are for the hackers. So they're going to have security up the wazoo. So I'm not really panicked about it. You know, that's just me. Uh, as I say, if I had millions of dollars in there, I probably would be you know, doing my trades on the exchange, transferring to the wallet and then transferring to an offline thing and putting it on a little USB and making sure that I have another computer that's never ever connected to the internet so no one can hack it, you know, whatever. If you break into my house, you'll find all my, all my security keys and things written down in my notepad. <laughs> <laughs> but Same. I'm Same, just a yeah. small guy. So would you, would you actually run the risk of 20 years in prison? just to steal my money you know yeah. i don't think so yeah. so I'm, I'm not i'm not panicked about that but ask me again in three years time once i've made hundreds of millions of dollars out of crypto and then i'll probably be investing in these super secure cold storage wallets and that sort of stuff yeah so cool yeah well that's that was pretty much all my questions concerns um okay. and then yeah, i've just got to create a little bit more time to to um you know investigate and read and and find the new ICOs coming through. You, you've been on the Krillionaire website? Yes. Yeah. So the, the blog the blog post that the guys asked me to write last week, we, we talked about, I think, on the first or second call, but I hadn't actually put it down in writing. So that's C-O-I-N process. If you check that out, that will help you a lot when you're picking your coins. Okay. So okay, read, read, read that. Yeah, I wrote that because I listened to, I went over all the old videos. Yeah, so, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, here it is. I've got it right here. So, yeah. Yep. So again, yep. if, if you, there, there was one that went broke. Um, I was reading about the other day. They, they took 42 million. So it's either a lot, a lot, a lot of people with, you know, $500 here and there or some really big players who were in there. Yeah. This guy got away with 42 million, but he'd set up this website and he used real pictures of real people that he'd taken off of LinkedIn but then he just made up fake names, made up fake bios and, you know, some sort of thing that, oh, that's right. They were going to 
decentralize fruit and vegetable distribution and get the blockchain, the, the blockchain was going to label your tomatoes and your zucchinis. <laughs> now, that sounds a little bit funny to you and me, right? We're having a giggle, but some people actually believed it. So the CEOs and stuff were made up. They weren't verifiable. You clicked on the link to LinkedIn and it wasn't actually the same guy that it said there. Um, the operation was, I don't know, like how are you going to make the blockchain label your fruits and vegetables? Like that's a, that's a job for people or robots. I don't know. Um, so it, it failed. It failed the first two steps of the test. You wouldn't even bother spending the next 20 minutes going through the next steps. Why yep. would you? It's, it's yeah. failed the first two. Cool. So, yeah. Well, I've got that. I've got that written down right here. The four step process. Yeah. With, yep. with coin. So, yeah. And as, as I say, like, you know, whatever, whatever product someone is selling, they should be able to explain it to you in layman's terms. Um, okay. I, was, I was chatting with a client earlier today and you know, he's saying, I need to understand the ins and outs of this. I need to understand this. And I just, pff, I don't understand the internal combustion engine, but I'm happy to buy a car. I'm happy to drive a car. Sometimes you just got to go, I know enough to get me by. I don't need to know what the programmers know, what the technicians know, what the engineers know. I don't need to know how the blockchain works in order to trust that it does work. You know? So maybe if, if you set yourself a time limit, it's like, okay, I'm going to spend 10 minutes on each coin and know as much as you can in 10 minutes. Otherwise you might spend two hours on one guy's website and then go, you know what? I don't want to buy that coin. And then you move on to the next one. It's easy to waste a day. Yes. And you look at four coins and you go, okay, well, there's four coins that I don't want. That just leaves me with 1900 that I might. But if yeah. you set yourself a time limit and go, I'm, I'm going to know enough information to get me by, that'll, that'll do. Yeah, so. awesome. Very cool. Now, speaking of guys who have got Tracer wallets and, and you know, encrypted software and millions of dollars, Quentin, what have you been up to? Uh, not millions of dollars, <laughs> but I have put, while the bloodbath has been on, I've been putting together my spreadsheet. I sent you a copy. Yeah. I'll put the link in the thing, if that's all right. Yeah, thank you. So this is basically all the coins on CoinSpot. And mm -hmm. I've done that coin thing on them. So I've got it here. I just, I don't know if what you can see it. I don't know if you can see it. When I see it. Can you see it? Um, I'm just opening it up now. Um, no, but I mean, I'm putting running it video on. on the, oh, um, okay. Sorry, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. So there oh, they are. Aren't you clever? You can share your screen at all. Yeah. So basically, if we look at, say, you know, any of them, ARC, say, yep. I've gone through, I've got the coin name, I've got the ICO name. Mm -hmm. And then this was the price on the 29th of the first. Yep. This is the overall high. And then that's the difference. So get, then I make it into a percentage. Yep. So you can basically take this spreadsheet then and use the data to change it. So you could just look at which ones are getting the highest percentage changes over the last, yep. however they've been in existence. Wow. Then the next one is what we call the gecko, which is on coingecko.com, mm -hmm. I think. Yes, and the yes. overall rating for ARC is 56%. And that's a mixture of the liquidity, the developer and the community. Mm -hmm. But that's your coin, what is it, operations? Or operations. Yep, yep. So that basically gives you the average percentage. And this one shows that the developers spending 54% of the time developing their coin. Whereas mm -hmm. if you look at Ardor, they're not spending any time developing it. And then <laughs> this is the community of um, Telegraph and all those sort of things they go through and work it out. Yeah, yeah. And then I have my holdings. So if I own $250, if I've invested $100 in Bitcoin and mm -hmm. it's now 250 it tells me what my profit is. Yeah, yeah. I've got the start date when that coin started. Mm -hmm. I've got the availability and the supply. So there's on that OOPS, there's 503 million coins available and the supply is 1 billion. There's the CEO and founder. Um, later on, I actually started putting in the link because quite a lot of them have 
lots of different people involved. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That goes around. Then this is the website for each coin, and then just their description. So I got all that together while all this up and downing is happening, just to keep me occupied. <laughs> wow. So you can download that off that link if you want and use that if you're looking at any coins that are there that you like. That's amazing. Who's impressed with that? Yeah. Holy cow. I love, I love spreadsheets, as I said. <laughs> as you can manipulate the, um, I can manipulate the data and, and see if there's any sort of trends. Like I noticed yeah. the top 30 coins that are doing well all have quite a high gecko. So they're, you know, they're up in the 60s, 70s and 80s. Of yeah. And um, also I noticed that some of the ones that have very high spreads don't do as well as some of the ones that have the narrower spread. So it's good using that information to be able to see trends and stuff. Yeah. So download that spreadsheet and have fun with it. The ones I've bought, because most, most of my money is now free because I did really well in November and December. And I mm. took all that out. So I'm playing with free money. So I'm a little bit more um, aggressive. So <laughs> I bought Dragon, which is yeah. uh, the Disney one. Yes, yes. Um, what else did I buy? XRB, just because it came on. Mm -hmm. I didn't really, and it had good stats. And EMC Squared. So those are the three I bought. Okay. But um, these are ones I'm sort of, they didn't have great stats, but lots of people were saying good things about them. So. Yeah, well, the, the, net, the network is important as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, sometimes you, you've got something, as, as you said, there's one there that, you know, the developers spent no time on it and some of them got no asset backing and they've got no product, but everybody's talking about it. Yeah. And the, well, that's I, the things I'm looking for. I'm not going really deep into it. Just mm. looking at the uh, coin gecko because that basically gives me the stats for the coins every coin i can look yep. at it in aussie dollars or um south african rand whatever you like mm. and then it sort of has the graphs and everything there and then i usually go to their website and just look at their website i don't tend to read the white papers much because i'm yep. not much of a reader if it was an audio i'd listen to it <laughs> Oh, they, they usually have like a 90 second video. Most of the coins yeah. if you go on their website, they've got a 90 second video. So uh, I'll watch the video and just read the stuff and look at the people yeah. like you said. And then I'll go into Telegraph or Facebook or somewhere like that and see if I can see if there are any comments about it. So. Yeah. I, if, they, if they can't explain the idea in a 90 second video with a little animated character, then I'm yeah. not interested. I'll, right. I'll always watch the video. And if I'm fascinated by the video, then I'll read the white paper. That's right. But the video is, is a good a good sort of executive summary of, you know, is yeah. the white paper actually going to be any good? Because some of these things, like there's some amazing like artificial intelligence and, and all sorts of bloody stuff that I can't really fathom. Yeah. Um, some amazing projects, but they've got to be able to communicate it. Like, what does this do for me? You know, does yeah. it help me save on my electricity bill? Does it make my tomatoes grow bigger? Or, you know, what, what's it do for me at the end of the day? It might be fantastic yeah. technology. You know, laser beams are great, but what's one done for me lately? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So I put in the share link and then if you, if anybody gets on, they can add information to it. So I've shared it. Mm. So it's on Google Drive. So if you find out some dates when they were made or you want to add other coins to them for the group, then yeah. it'd be a great resource for everybody to just get that information. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Quentin, I'm, I'm going to send you a prize. <laughs> You, you just send me an email of your postal address. It's going to be a physical thing. It's not just a, a digital, I'm not going to send you a Bitcoin. Well, I've but, got a Bitcoin to send you, actually. Yeah, you, you said that a few weeks ago. I was, I was, I was wanting I to say what. From, I bought them from China because when I got out of my company last year, I sent them little presents. Yeah, yeah. I had a few left. So. <laughs> but they're fun leaving on your desk. Okay. Well, you, 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 send me, you, you email me your postal address and I'll, I'll send you my, mine as well. So we can, we can swap a couple of little prezies there, but really appreciate your work. I mean, that, that spreadsheet, I'm not sure how long it took you, but for me, that would be like a, a probably a 60, 80 hour project. Yeah, that's about how long it was, but I'm semi-tired, so. 
I, I um, didn't like looking at my coin thing very much, so I um, it's going up and down too much at the moment and not up enough. So I thought I'd do a project and not look at it for a while. Wow. So there, there you go, Glenn. I mean, that's that's taken care of all of your questions. Um, and the series seems coin spot. So. Yeah, yeah, it's it's brilliant. I've tried I mean, all the other ones, but I find them really complicated for my old brain. So. Mm. There's, there's, there's too says, much oh, information. Yeah. Everybody says I'm silly because of the fees and everything, but I really don't care about fees if I'm making money. It's like tax. You know? <laughs> Keep it simple. That's right. Yeah, that's I made up them and drew it out, so I'm happy. That's brilliant. Thank you, Quinton. That's all right. Love it. Fantastic. Um, so I did. I did mention in the email this morning. Um, we've had a, a brief update. Well, I'm, I'm guessing people understand the the news from China and the news from India. If you didn't see that, China has, has, has been selling out because of Chinese New Year. That's been affecting the market for the last couple of weeks. Uh, the big hit that we had the other day was the Indian Prime Minister came out and made a statement. He was concerned about people using cryptocurrency for illegal things, you know, drugs and guns and that sort of stuff. Um, I can't remember the exact words that he used, you know, word for word, but it was basically something along the lines of, we're looking to ban cryptocurrency use for criminals who are using it for nefarious purposes. And it was reported in the paper that the Prime Minister came out and said, we're looking to ban cryptocurrency use. They completely lost the end of his sentence. And so that was the news that was reported in the paper. And of course, everybody in India went, oh my God, the Prime Minister is going to ban cryptocurrency. So everybody started selling out of Bitcoin. And that news was picked up by other, other newspapers and, and circulated right around the country. So when you've got 1.2 billion people who are hearing that Bitcoin is going to be banned, obviously that's going to start a bit of a, an avalanche. And it's only when other people went back to the source and found out that, you know, that was a, not a lie, but a, a bit of a, an urban legend <laughs> that sort of got carried away. So we're starting to see support again in the last, last 24 hours, which is good. And um, hopefully no, no other things going crazy, but you know, this is what happens in a market that's not regulated. You know, if, if those sort of myths and things started circulating in the stock exchange and the stock exchange dropped by more than five or 10%, they'd actually cease trading. They just say, okay, cut it off. We're gonna go back and find out where this story came from and the market's closed until tomorrow. Or sometimes I'll cease trading in a particular stock. If some stock's gone up by 20% and nobody knows why, because the company hasn't made an announcement, they will cease trading on that one until they find out. Likewise, if it's gone down. In an unregulated environment, we don't have those securities. We don't have someone stepping in when trading goes too high or too low. But the, the flip side of that is you can also make 600% profit in a single day, so or more. So you gotta take the good with the bad on that one. So it's good to get your news from multiple sources. <laughs> Don't just believe what's coming out of, you know, CNN or NBC or India Today or China Daily or wherever. Check a few other sources because we are in a world market. It's not just the Australian stock market or the American stock market anymore. Um, I also I said also I'm going to reveal what I've been holding at the moment. Um, and just sitting on these ones. Question, Jeremy. Yeah, mate, sure. Like today, they were saying the stock market plunged twenty-three billion or something dollars in Australia. And yeah. Heaps of America. Does that have any effect on cryptos? Uh, it depends, because when the money leaves the stock market, it's going somewhere. Like when those people sold out of those shares, they're they're putting it into property, or they're putting it into business, or they're paying off their debt, or maybe they're they're funneling it into crypto. Mm -hmm. um, so whenever there's a, there's a market going down, like in Australia, we basically have the stock market and the property market, and that's what we've had for 200 years. Mm -hmm. uh, when the stock market goes down, the property market goes up and, and vice versa. Yeah. Um, in the US, they don't have the property market as such. They have the stock market and the bond market, and that's what they've had for the last 200 years. And yeah. now we've got a crypto that, that's sort of come in and, and sometimes they go, oh my God, 23 billion was wiped off the stock market. And you go, wow, that sounds like a lot of money. Because if you're carrying that around your back pocket, that's a lot of money. Yeah. But when you look at the market cap of the total stock market yeah. and you take 23 billion, you go, well, that's 1%. It's yeah. down 1%. Who cares? 
it'll be yeah. back up 2% tomorrow. But they needed to put something in the last 30 seconds of the news report. The leaders yeah. needed to put something on the back page of the paper. So they just, you know, worked it out. Understand. Yeah. It's not really, not really a big deal um, unless they can actually report and say, hey, the stock market fell by 20%. That's a big deal. Right. You know, 23 billion or 53 trillion is, is kind of meaningless until you know what the actual size of the market is. Right. You know? So the good, so, good traders won't care and all of us go, oh, oh, just like they do for crypto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I could say I broke into Glenn's house and I stole one, one thousandth of his assets. Like, he's not going to care. No. You know? I might have stole five cents. I might have stole one of his old Archie comics or something like that. But if it's one one thousandth of whatever he had, like who cares, you know? So yeah, you, you need to take that in, into the, the whole context of what's the actual size of the market. Right. Okay. So, right. And I, I'm, I'm not sure what the size of that market is. So, you know, if you can find out you let us know and set, take it into, take it into account. Um, yeah. Okay, so what am I holding at the moment? A very tiny, tiny bit of Bitcoin. Um, I got frustrated with the speeds of transfer of Bitcoin a couple of weeks ago um, because I was transferring money to people overseas and it was going very, very slowly, sometimes taking up to six hours for a transfer. Uh, there is the Lightning Protocol coming in soon because Bitcoin is open source, anybody can work on it. Um, so there are some developers working on the lightning protocol. Bitcoin at the moment can do about seven transactions a second. Um, Ethereum and Ripple and some of the other ones can do thousands of transactions a second. And IOTA is, is virtually unlimited. So that's why I got frustrated with Bitcoin and, and sold out of that one just coincidentally before it, before it crashed down. Um, but the lightning protocol is apparently going to make Bitcoin so much faster. And there's, there's some guys working on that at the moment. So that's going to be happening even as you know, Bitcoin's very cheap at the moment. Uh, it's going to get more expensive because with the new lightning protocol, obviously it's going to go faster. It's like when they bring out new software updates for your phone, which is supposed to make it faster. Not in Apple's case. Um, also holding a fair bit of Ethereum at the moment. Um, some Ripple, some Ethereum Classic. Uh, Cryptarium, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago on a call. They're, they're building a bridge in between the Ethereum network and the, um, the Bitcoin network. So that those two blockchains can actually talk to each other. Um, Lambda, I believe, is involved in the same project. Please correct me if I'm wrong on that one, Quentin. Um, well, the same, same project, but coming at it from a different angle. So they're both in the same market, trying to build a bridge between these two, these two networks, the Bitcoin network and the Ethereum network, which are operating wonderfully well, but just don't actually communicate with each other. Um, okay, a couple of minutes left. What have I got here? Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, Iyungo, which I spoke about earlier. Um, Power Ledger which I've, I've spoken about on a couple of previous calls, selling your electricity to each other, IOTA, which is basically having no miners, um, Monero, which is the secret squirrel one, it's profiled on the Krillionaire website, Waves, which I haven't spoken about before, Waves actually enables you to launch your own coin on their platform. Uh, it's a bit simpler than the Ethereum platform, so if you've got an idea for a great technology, you can jump onto Waves and you can actually launch your own coin. You've just got to buy some of their coins first before you launch those, which is why the market for waves will continually be, be high in my opinion, because people have got to buy that. Um, Bank Era is another one that I've bought and they're similar to Ripple. They're actually aligned with a few major banks. So for people who are um, not necessarily diving headfirst into crypto, some of the more conservative people or the older generation who still want to be aligned with a major bank, then Bankera is one of those ones similar to Ripple where you can actually have an account that's lined with the bank and they do actually pay interest, which is interesting because they, they send a little, um, it's, it's not much, it's probably not, a, not as high as these guys who are promising one and 2% a day, uh, but they do pay interest on their assets. The last one that I'm holding is um, Rentberry. And I talked about that again a couple of calls ago where they're looking at basically streamlining the way that you go and rent a house. So at the moment you go and rent a house and you might have to fill in paperwork and wait three weeks or a week or something like that. Whereas you can get an Airbnb place like that 
because it's powered by the internet. They can check your social media profiles. They can check your ratings from other people and, and your feedback. So Rentberry is basically looking at, at bringing that speed of use to the rental market. So I believe it's really, really going to shake things up and possibly even um, property managers are going to be out of a job because this thing's actually, you know, automated can check all your, your credentials and um, do things so much more quickly. So Quentin, thank you. Have to go. Um, what else did I promise this week? Um, making money while coins are going down very quickly because I, I do want to finish on time out of respect for you guys time and the ones who are watching this um, making money while coins are going down so obviously you know as as bitcoin's gone down from 25,000 a few weeks ago to eight or nine thousand people are actually selling their bitcoin yep that's that's what makes the price go down if you're mining then you can actually be making money because to sell their Bitcoin, they've got to process a transaction. That money's got to go somewhere. So if you've got a mining rig set up at home, then you're actually making money whilst this is going on and people are transferring their Bitcoin or out of Bitcoin into, into cash. The other way, of course, is, is arbitrage because the news broke first in India that, oh my God, the prime minister's canceling, you know, outlawing crypto. Um, so the Indian people started selling off first. I don't know what time it is in India right now, but there would have been other exchanges that were open, but maybe no one was awake in Korea. Maybe no one was awake in England at the time. So you can find out that, you know, the, the Bitcoin might have been going down in price on one exchange and moving up on the other. And that's a chance for you to buy low and sell high just by flipping it from one exchange to the other. That's a couple of little quick tips there. Uh, we've got about three minutes left. Um, what did I what else I want to say? Your coffees that you've been buying for us. I'm not sure if you've realized that, but um, when you, when you buy a coffee for me, I actually buy a drink of water for a kid in Africa. Um, if you've been doing that, then I've probably tagged you on Facebook. You'll be aware of that. If you're not aware of that, it's a great idea to jump in and do that. Um, the coffee thing, Glenn should be in the email. He says, hopefully, otherwise check the bottom of the Trillionaire website. Uh, it's got a, a PayPal link and there's also a Bitcoin link, depending on whether you want to pay in cash or whether you want to buy, pay in crypto. And that's why I've, I've been doing these okay, calls cool. for the last for the last few weeks is just like five bucks buy me a coffee and we, we supply water to the kids in africa and we keep doing the calls and helping everybody out Sweet. Um, i'll get you a couple i'll get you a couple of coffees this week thank you very much um okay and lastly we're um oh the the coin that i've launched on which is currently on waves i'm looking at ethereum just for, for scalability and also at the, the hash graph, which is the one where you can actually have no mining fees. It just transfers because you've got to process other people's. Uh, the Boston coin, there's a link on the Krillionaire website. And um, we've appointed a few people to the, to the board, to the management team this week. And um, looking at doing some exciting things there. Basically, it's, it operates like an exchange traded fund or a managed fund or a mutual fund. For those of you who are familiar with that. Again, lucky superannuation, this is how you first learned about the stock market. You can throw a couple of thousand bucks in there and we'll split it up amongst the top 200 coins and the top 200 tech stocks. Because again, we don't know whether Bitcoin's still gonna be around in 10 years or whether Ethereum's gonna beat Bitcoin for number one spot or whether Litecoin's gonna be the number one. But at the end of the day, if you diversify it amongst the, the top 10 or the top 50, then you're gonna be in a much better position and also owning shares in the companies that are underlying it because all of these coin companies relying on miners, relying on, on transactions, relying on storage. So they've got to have hard drives, they've got to have graphics cards, they've got to have power, that sort of stuff. So by, by investing into the underlying hardware that supports all of these coins, doesn't matter which coin comes out on top, we're going to make sure we're still making a profit. So that's the Boston coin. You can read about that on the Boston website. You can read about that on the Krillionaire website. There's a link there. And um, it's also being updated on, on LinkedIn at the moment. So that's it. And I think we've managed to finish with one minute to spare. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, JT, for phoning in earlier and saying that you weren't going to be here, but you're going to be watching the recording. And for those other people, thank you very much. We will see you same time next week. Cheers. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you.